Welcome to our review of the Winter Expansion for Dice Kingdoms of Valeria. Now, before we get going, I want to make sure you read, watched, or heard our Dice Kingdoms of Valeria review, either on the blog, YouTube, or on episode 198 of our podcast, Oddball Games. Feel free to pause and go check it out. We'll still be here when you get back. We also have to thank Daily Magic Games for sending us review copies of the base game and this expansion. So the Dice Kingdoms of Valeria Winter Expansion was designed by Levi Moat, who's also the man behind the original, and it features the Miko's artwork yet again. The player count, playing time, and recommended age doesn't change with this expansion, though I would say the weight is just a touch higher. The expansion has an MSRP of $15 USD. The Winter Expansion for Dice Kingdoms of Valeria provides you with two new pads of sheets that you use instead of the ones in the original box. These feature a winter theme and snow-covered artwork. Changes on these sheets include different guild-building effects in different orders, a completely revised road system, and monsters whose dens have to be discovered before they can be attacked. For a look at these new sheets and how they are packaged, check out our Dice Kingdoms of Valeria Winter Expansion unboxing video on YouTube. There's really not a lot to say here. Um, these sheets are more sheets. They're the exact same quality of the original. You get just as many, 50 of each side, and they have the same bleed issue that the originals do. They're also very dark, but we'll get into that when sharing our thoughts. Using Dice Kingdoms of Valeria Winter Expansion couldn't be easier. When handing out sheets at the start of the game, hand out one of each winter sheet instead of the originals. That's it. In general, these sheets work exactly the same as the base sheets, with only one exception. In this version of Dice Kingdoms of Valeria, the monsters are holed up in their layers for the winter and can't be attacked until you control the domains connected to them. At the start of the game, only the smallest group of enemies can be attacked. All other monster groups can't be attacked until you build roads to the appropriate domains that connect to them. All of the rest of the rules for Dice Kingdoms of Valeria apply as normal, and these sheets can also be used for solo play. Do note, though, that there are more changes than just the roadmap. What you unlock when and how much of each has changed for each guild as well. Now, the best part about the Winter Expansion for Dice Kingdoms is that it changes things up just a bit, but not enough that it changes the overall feel of the game. Still feels like you're playing Dice Kingdoms. For fans of the game, this expansion just gives you more of what you love. Initially, I was hesitant as to what sort of value this could possibly have, as at a quick glance, it's more or less similar. Yep. Now, despite feeling familiar, though, it does feel exactly the same. It does feel a little different. And I think this is mainly driven by two changes that have that impact. Now, one's obvious. The new rules for attacking monsters. This does have a pretty significant impact on play, which drives not only fiercer competition for the low-cost monsters, but also more player interaction, as players are going to want to watch to see what other monsters other players can reach and what they might be working towards. The new monster system also seems to reduce the number of red dice used by players in general, which then again leads to less coins, which leads to less statues in play by the end of the game. This has led our games to have less deviation in final scores by the end, which is something I actually personally like. If you don't do much attacking already, though, it may not have as much of an impact on your game. True. The other significant change is the roads themselves, um, particularly what you can reach at the beginning. Instead, you're starting in the two corners. Now, with the base game, it is very easy to get to all the various die modifiers very early in the game. They're only two or three pips away from the starting points. With the inventory expansion, it takes a lot more uses of green dice to unlock these. And I've yet to see a game where someone has unlocked every possible die modifier. What this ends up meaning is that you start off with no randomness mitigation through player powers and only unlock them later in the game. And you'll probably never unlock all of them. I actually kind of like the feel of this because it feels more like you're gaining more control over your destiny as the game goes on. I also don't feel it gets too random, which is the, the scary part of this, because you still have three dice to choose from when picking which actions to take and that whole blue magic die that you can add to one of them. Now, I found this as less of a change than the monsters, but my own style tended just to be to work with what I got, and I didn't modify my dice as much as I probably should have. Yeah, that is something that's definitely easy to, to forget with or without the expansion. Use those dice modifiers. 
Now, these are the big changes. Along with these, there are some less impactful but still important guild power order changes that just, I don't know, make it feel more interesting and fresh. It just kind of feels different. I would say they're slightly more complicated and the game is slightly more difficult overall. And since playing with it, all of our scores have tended to be on the lower end when compared to the original, which is slightly disappointing just in the fact that I don't think you could combine the two sets. Though I would be tempted to mix and match a sheet from each to see how that works, but I think you want all players to be using the exact same set. Yeah, absolutely. There's one big issue with these new sheets, which I think is important to note. This new artwork is very dark. Mm -hmm. And this has resulted in the paths to the monsters being almost impossible to see. Yeah. It feels like the contrast is wrong on printing. Now, along with this, there's one particular plume of smoke that once you figure out where the paths are, looks like another path. <laughs> uh, and every single time we played the game with someone for the first time, they have misunderstood what reaches what. Yeah, I, I like you said, it might be a printing error. I don't understand why this isn't more clear. Plus, it's snow covered. The whole map snow covered. Why are the paths muddy brown and overlaid dark green trees like just give us no power path put little footprints oh there's just so many ways they could have made this more clear now thankfully it takes half a game maybe two games to internalize where the connections are and as long as you have someone at the table that knows where they are and can constantly like, oh no 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 that doesn't hook out uh it, it, it doesn't really hurt the gameplay but it is a disappointment yeah i, I actually uh once i found them what i found I, is is just grab a pencil or something and, and mark them in so that you can mm -hmm. see where you have to get to, uh, to do that. Now, sadly, yeah. they also didn't include the using red dice equals gold reference that they also left off the original sheet. There's still room for it on this sheet and its absence continues to baffle me. Yeah. Even on their Kickstarter page, it shows final sheets and these aren't on the final sheet. So I'm, I'm again, something went wrong there. Maybe these, hopefully, these will be things addressed. The game will be popular enough. It'll get a second printing and they'll fix this. Yeah. Overall, everyone I played Dice Kingdoms of Valeria with who's used the winter expansion sheets has enjoyed them. A few of them, myself included, prefer them. That said, I don't feel these are a must have. They don't fix the game. They don't make it that much better. They don't even add all that much variability to them. There's no real need to rush out and pick these up. Personally, what I would suggest is wait till you're about to burn out of the base game, burn out on it, you're getting a little tired of it, get something. Or if you're about to run out of sheets, instead of buying new copies of the original sheets or putting your game in the recycling bin, pick up a copy of this expansion. Actually, reprints of the new sheets in this expansion cost the same amount because you're getting 50 sheets or whatever, two times 50 sheets either way. It's just different enough to make things interesting and fresh again. And it's just going to give you just as much gameplay as you originally got. It's almost like buying a second copy of the same game and refreshing the whole thing. I agree. I actually enjoyed the winter sheets more once you get past those graphical hiccups, which are notable to get by. Uh, I can't even exactly place my finger on what the reason is. Mm -hmm. It just felt a bit better. Uh, and while that's not exactly helpful, it's interesting that I'm not the only one who has felt this. Yes. Now, if you really love the game and you're playing this week after week, maybe pick up a copy of Winter Expansion sooner rather than later because it'll help keep that engagement strong. And for those groups, I, I would pick up extra sheets of the base game too and then, you know, swap up what you use. Maybe one game use this and the next game use the other. Uh, maybe even go so far as to mix and match them and see how it turns out. Though, again, I still think every player should have the same thing. I really don't think this will work if someone uses this, whatever, spring, summer, original, I don't even know what they're called. And another player uses winter. Our winter scores have been significantly lower than our standard scores. Green and white for. <laughs> yes, green games. and white sheets. Definitely a great way to refresh the game if your original sheets are running low without risking having a whole new set just as your players get bored of it. Yeah, that's a good point. Now, if you thought Death Kingdoms was pretty cool but could use something a bit more, you might want to see if you want to try out a set of these sheets. They might just be that thing. There's like, like Sean said, you can't quite place what it is. It just feels better. So this might turn your game from good to great. Now, the print and play of the expansion is included with the main game. So when you buy 
that print and play, you do get both sheets. Now, while on the print and play, the art from the Miko isn't present, somewhat frustratingly, it is clearer to see the paths in this version. Yeah, you can kind of tell they kind of blocked out the graphic design, but for anyone who has vision issues, this is actually going to make the game more playable by using those files. Now, if you didn't really like Dice Kingdoms, especially if it was because of the randomness, these new sheets aren't going to fix the game. Due to the new road system, the game actually becomes more random than the original. Indeed, nothing from here will rescue it from your discard pile if you just didn't enjoy the original. Now, personally, I'm glad I got to check out both sets of sheets. Um, Kickstarter backers got the same thing. You got both right included in there. While I do prefer the winter sheets, just barely, I'm happy to play with either set. And now I just leave it up to whoever I'm playing with to decide what to use. Well, that brings us to the end of our review of the Dice Kingdoms of Valeria Winter Expansion. A couple of new sheets that keep things interesting while giving more of what you love about the original. What's an expansion you love for just giving you more of the same? Let us know about it in the comments. Or head over to discord.tabletopbellhop.com to talk about it with other Bellhop fans. Now, if you dig this review and the other content we create, I invite you to tip the bellhop at patreon.com slash tabletop bellhop or buy us a coffee at coffee.com. That's K-O hyphen F-I slash tabletop bellhop. I also invite you to check out my written review of this expansion on the blog. 